Hello, and welcome to another edition of AppSec Decoded. I'm Taylor Armerding, security advocate for the Synopsys Software Integrity Group. And today we're going to be talking about software supply chain problems and solutions. So today we're joined by Mike McGuire, Security Solutions Manager with the Synopsys Software Integrity Group. He's been with the company for two years working on open source risk management and has seen the same horror stories we've all seen that result from software supply chain attacks. Mike, thanks for being with us. Pleasure. President Biden's uh, now well-known executive order on cybersecurity calls for federal agencies, eventually, sometimes deadlines get a little elastic maybe, to buy only software products that have an S-bomb. Do you think that this will be the push needed to make S-bombs mainstream? No doubt in my mind. Cool. Abs absolutely. I believe it's going to set a precedent mm -hmm. where it's both required and not required. So that means inside and outside mm -hmm. of the public sector yep. in the United States, but also inside and outside mm -hmm. of the United States. So like I said, where it's not even required, because if you think about it, a lot of the greatest minds on this topic have gotten together to put put these frameworks together to mm -hmm. come up with the best formats, for example, a mm -hmm. software bill of materials, the best standards. Yep. And it would almost be prudent mm -hmm. to take this as a guiding principle or a mm -hmm. de facto standard. Yep. And it wouldn't be the first time that we've seen something like this serve as precedent, even where it's not required. So right. if you take the cybersecurity framework, laid out by NIST, that was originally intended to be adhered to by operators of critical national infrastructure like pipelines yep, sure. and power grids. Right. And since then, it's been adopted by organizations outside of that. Again, they're not required to, like yep. JP Morgan Chase right. sure. and, and Microsoft. They're adopting and they're adhering to the, mm -hmm. the CSF, as it's called. Right. So that's a really solid example on top of many others, both inside and outside of the United States, where mm -hmm. these governmental actions have been used as precedent. So organizations in the private sector who do no business with the government mm -hmm. and have no customers who do no business with the government, so the government's nowhere in their supply chain, right. they should probably expect and start preparing for their consumers to start mm -hmm. asking yep. for things similar, like a right. software bill of materials. Right. It sounds like creating a really comprehensive SBOM is gonna be a heavy lift. I mean, most organizations have thousands to tens of thousands of apps, and those apps all have components, dependencies, indirect dependencies, trend. It, it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper, and so, keeping track of finding all of those, keeping track of them and maintaining them sounds like a huge, a huge job. What methods and tools do you recommend for organizations to make an S-bomb that's really gonna help them out? Well, you're absolutely right. It is a huge job. We're finding through our own research that open source comes as no surprise, right. is extremely popular but that it's still growing popularity. Yeah. Right? We're finding that it's in 90% of the applications right. we scan. 75% right. of that application is purely open source. Open source. Right. And I believe on average, each code base has in the 500 or so, mm -hmm. fi 500 or so components, open source components per, co right. per code base. So when you think about that and then all the dependencies within those, as you mentioned, yeah. It's a daunting task, yeah. one that really cannot be done manually. And if you can do it manually, I'd argue you are negating the benefits of using open source in the first place. Be like digging a tunnel with teaspoons. It's, uh... Exactly, just go over the hill. <laughs> yeah. Right, go over the mountain. <laughs> right. So you need some sort of automation. Right. And a software composition analysis tool is, is gonna be that automation. It's a tool that can look throughout the entire SDLC. Mm -hmm. So seeing whatever developers are dragging in, seeing what sort of dependencies are resolved at build time, mm -hmm. taking a look at build artifacts before they're released, mm -hmm. and taking a look at containers, container images as well, binaries, 
and identifying all that open source, putting together an accurate bill of materials, and also consistently monitoring it mm -hmm. after that application has been deployed. Right. And helping you segment mm -hmm. all your different ac applications and all your different versions of applications, right? Because there's going to be a bunch out there. Mm -hmm. So software composition analysis tool is going to be your answer. Simple dependency analysis probably isn't going to do it. It won't find everything. Mm -hmm. And again, security is only as strong as its weakest link. It's the ones you don't find that are going to haunt you. Now, open source is extremely important, but another important consideration is that securing your software supply chain does go beyond open source. Right. So you need to make sure you are not the weak link in yes. the supply chain. Make sure you are not writing security vulnerabilities and weaknesses into the proprietary code that you're building. And software organizations write proprietary code. That's what makes them unique. That's what they sell. Right. And developers, by trade, aren't mm -hmm. security experts. Yep. I came from a developer background. Mm -hmm. I was not a security expert. Everything's going to be self-taught or taught in-house. So you need to make sure that you aren't writing security weaknesses and vulnerabilities into your code. And then even farther is taking a look at how those applications actually behave how they interact with users, how they interact with one another once they're in a production environment. Right. Right, everything before that, you might be able to argue it's sort of theoretical. Right. You definitely want to test that in practice as well. So there's several tools like SCA and dynamic and, and interactive security testing that can be done to help achieve that. Thanks. We'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, it's, it's a hard job, but you can do it, and you need to do it. I'm Taylor Armerding. This is AppSec Decoded. Thanks to Mike McGuire, and we will see you the next time.